comments have objected to you using the general term the West, and they want you to be more specific because there is no monolithic block called the West. It is an unfair generalization, they say. You know, it's strange, if you think about it, it's strange that you don't want me to call you the West. You don't want everyone to be lumped together under that term. It's not my term, it's your term. I didn't come up with it, you did. You call yourselves the West. Western civilization. We all grew up hearing about how wonderful the West is. Western achievement, Western thought, Western enlightenment. You're happy to take collective credit as the West for whatever you think is good. But for the bad things, you want to disassociate yourselves from it. When you're talking about the bad things, then you're like, whoa, what West are you talking about exactly? Who do you mean by the West? The way you people tell the story, people like uh, Douglas Murray or Jordan Peterson or Sam Harris or uh, Richard Dawkins or uh, Hitchens, Christopher Hitchens, all these types, you would think that every European on the continent participated in painting the Sistine Chapel, everyone painting in shifts, all of you collectively invented penicillin from the telephone to airplanes, from the, the cotton gin to the microchip. You all did that as one gigantic team effort. We, the West, uh, abolished slavery. We, the West, gave women the right to vote. We, the West, developed modern technology. You like being called the West then, but just bring up one, just one of your innumerable atrocities, and then everyone starts looking around. Who, who, me? Oh, you must have me mistaken for some other uh, person, some other West, Q, you know, shaggy, it wasn't me. My forefathers didn't own slaves. My forefathers didn't slaughter the Native Americans. My forefathers were just poor, innocent peasants. I have nothing to do with it. Innocent as can be. You want to take collective credit, but you want to individualize blame. But you'll say that Isaac Newton, for example, is a product of the West. Michelangelo was a product of the West. Mozart was a product of the West. Leonardo da Vinci, Thomas Edison, Steve Jobs, they're all products of the West. But somehow your villains are all bastards. <laughs> illegitimate children that you don't want to claim. No. Hitler was your child. King Leopold was your child. Harry Truman was your child. A man who killed more people in a matter of seconds than anyone in the history of the human race. And not to mention every American president after Truman. You know, from the Korean War to Vietnam to the dirty wars in uh, Central and South America to Panama. The first and second wars in Iraq. Somalia, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, and before Truman. I don't think that the United States has had a single decade in its history when it wasn't slaughtering some people somewhere in the world. These are all products of Western civilization too. But anytime these crimes uh, get brought up, you deny collective responsibility. I mean, if I try to list all of your crimes, I can't even remember them all. But if I try to list just the ones that I can remember, your battery will die before I can even properly get started. You know, I saw a video uh, the other day of Omar Soleiman. And he was asked by some lady, some woman, who asked him, why don't Muslims condemn uh, acts of terror by Muslim criminals? And he was trying to be patient, you know, his style. He was trying to be kind. He was smiling, a very forced smile. And he said, no, Muslims always condemn these things. But why don't you condemn when one of your people murders Muslims in a mosque. And of course he has a point, but also, of course they don't. Of course you don't condemn those things. You've got statues of Winston Churchill, who starved millions of Bengalis, and who used poison gas on the Kurds. You not only don't condemn your terrorists, you not only don't try them for war crimes as they should be tried, you re-elect them into office not just elect them re-elect them and you deny any responsibility for their atrocities no if you want to be called the west when it comes to any positive achievements then you have to accept being called the west for all the full catalog of inhuman vicious uh, genocide murder rape torture bigotry exploitation oppression assassinations coups and subjugation evil and brutality, all that your people have ever committed. That's why I always say Western civilization is a sarcastic term because you never civilized. And, you know, we made cool stuff 
is not a defense. Your approach to morality is uh, let's not and say we did. Let's not be moral, but say we are. You think that righteousness is denying the evil you do, not stopping yourselves from doing the evil. As long as you say you don't do it, or you call it something else, then somehow uh, you're not evil when you do evil, as long as you don't admit it. It's upside down world. Every day is backwards day in the West. Bad is good, wrong is right. It's no surprise that you think that uh, a person should be called whatever pronoun they self-identify as, because that's what you've always believed. That's what you've always done. You self-identify as virtuous, as moral, as righteous, freedom-loving, tolerant people, even though you have never been that, and no one in the world sees you as that, but still you insist that that's what we call you. You insist that we deal with you as if that's what you are. You always believe that the whole world uh, should participate in your self-delusion. So of course you came up with this idea that a man uh, should be called a woman and treated as a woman if he believes that that's what he is, or a woman a man. This isn't new with you. It's always been the way you believed. It's always been the way you functioned in the world. That uh, you believe that you had the right to defy objective reality and that your own victims uh, had no right to define you. No matter what, you insist on your own blamelessness. And I'm telling you, how on earth do you expect to ever stop doing blameworthy things if you think that you are immune from blame, no matter what you do? Yes, okay, your forefathers were probably poor peasants. I agree with you. They didn't participate in the crimes of the West. They didn't participate in colonization or imperialism. But then they also have no reason to take pride in the achievements of the West either, and neither do you. They were victims of the West in their own way, and so are you. If you want to disassociate yourself from the crimes, then disassociate yourself from the achievements and realize that you and your forefathers and your ancestors were all abandoned and betrayed and duped by propaganda about Western civilization. No one ever cared about your development or your forefathers' development. No one ever cared about your welfare or your forefathers' welfare. No one ever cared about your upliftment or theirs. No one ever cared about your life. Not yours, not your forefathers, not your ancestors. And the West doesn't care about you now. But here you are defending it. Like you have no self-esteem, like you have no pride. You and I both know the West doesn't care if you starve to death. They don't care if you get kicked out of your home and live on the streets. If you spend the rest of your life drowning in debt, they don't care. If you fry your brains on drugs, they don't care. And if you decide that life is too hard, they'll help you kill yourself. That's the West. Facts. And that's what the West thinks of you. The West didn't raise you right. Because you don't matter to the West. They don't care if you have knowledge. They don't care if you have an education. They'll pass you on up to the next grade, whether or not you can read or write. Because you don't matter. Every day of your life, your civilization, all around you, is shouting at you in a million different voices that you don't matter. You're just a replaceable cog in the machine. Everyone in the West is regarded as disposable by the West. And still you defend it as the pinnacle of human refinement. You need to break that spell because you're living in a trance, <laughs> a trance of uh, propaganda that's all designed to keep you oblivious to your own humiliation. But then you'll get mad at me for trying to tell you to break that spell, to break that trance. You'll get mad at me because I'm trying to tell you that you need to stop being humiliated. You need to stop uh, aligning yourself with the, the, the ones who are humiliating you. You need to stop aligning yourself with the ones that were humiliating your forefathers and that are humiliating you now. And you're going to get mad at me. But you don't disassociate yourself. I'm supposed to disassociate you from them. But you're not. <laughs> Why should I disassociate you from the West when you don't do it yourself? I'm trying to tell you that you need to break the trance. I'm trying to tell you that you need to break out of the propaganda. You need to break out of the indoctrination. You need to break out of the programming. But you're going to get mad at me for telling you that. And you want to hold on to the programming. You want to hold on to the indoctrination. And then while you're holding on to it, I'm supposed to separate you uh, from the indoctrination that you're, that you're holding on to. So how are you supposed to change?